Okay, so uh, we're discussing uh, covariant differentiation and uh, parallel transport, and we want to uh, illustrate these uh, concepts in the case of, uh, of a sphere. And so, looking back a, a little bit from where we ended, let me just let me just start off the next discussion by by looking back at, uh, at an example that we want to look at uh, more closely, just parallel transport along a geodesic uh, triangle as shown in this, in this picture. <clears throat> so I, I'm imagining that I'm, that I'm taking the tangent to a geodesic that goes from A to B on the, uh, on the sphere, okay? And uh, it goes from A, the North Pole, to B on the equator. And uh, here's the, here's the uh, uh, parallel transport of the, of the tangent vector, okay? Parallel transport means that the covariant derivative of it is, uh, is equal to zero. So the covariant deriv derivative of the, tra of the uh, tangent along the curve is equal to zero. That means that, uh, that uh, the, the gradient of the, of the tangent has no components in the tangent uh, uh, space at all as it moves from A to B. It can have components in the, uh, in, in the direction uh, normal to the surface, and it certainly does in that case, and we computed it, and we will compute it again several, several times uh, along the way as we do other illustrations. So here's how it moves, and then it hits the point B, and it's headed straight down uh, as shown. And then I continue to parallel transport it, Okay, along the equator, that's simple to understand. It just continues to be perpendicular to the equator. And then I parallel transport back from C back to A. Okay, and the, th the thing that I, what I learned about this is that uh, parallel transport along a closed path uh, of, a, 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 of a vector doesn't come back to the original value. I see that originally it pointed from along A to B, and, the, and at the end it points along A to C. And so there's an opening angle of theta uh, between uh, the initial and final positions, okay, uh, directions, I mean. Okay, it's parallel transported everywhere around this geodesic triangle. We'll do parallel transport in more general contexts, and we'll understand the formalism of it uh, considerably more later. But for the time being, this illustrates uh, an important concept. Uh, we see this opening angle, opening angle phi in this geodesic triangle. The other angles, interior angles of the triangle, are both pi over two and pi over two. So the um, so the angular deficit, the sum of the interior angles minus pi, is simply phi itself. Okay. Uh, but now we go back to our discussion of uh, of the Gauss Binet theorem in the case of the sphere. I didn't need the full full. Uh, uh, formalism of gauss binet to do this, we'll do that later. I was able to just use the simplicity of, of, of a sphere and its global uh, topology to, uh, to infer the gauss binet theorem in that case. And we learned in that case that the angular deficit for the geodesic triangle shown is phi is equal to the integral of the, uh, uh, of the Gaussian curvature uh, over, that, over that area. In fact, we showed in fact, that it was it was uh, this one upon r squared times the surface area of the uh, geodesic uh, triangle. So we learned that although although v is parallel transported, it is different at the end of its journey compared to its beginning. It is rotated to an angle phi, which depends upon its path. Okay, I can I can take a narrow path phi will be small. I can take a, a, a wide path phi can be as large as two pi. Okay, and it's rotated, and that that uh, uh, vector, the tangent, is rotated because clearly uh, the curvature of the sphere is different is different from zero. I can look back and but look back at my picture and uh, and understand where that phi deficit comes from. Just look at the picture here. Okay, you see here's the tangent going down, being parallel transported around, and then coming back around here. Clearly, phi opens up because the sphere is uh, is curved. Okay, and phi is a measure of that of that curvature, the average curvature of the surface inside that geodesic triangle. Okay. 
and that's written down, and that's written down on the other side of our of our approximate sphere, this handy little white balloon. Okay, so to get to the heart of the matter, we want to consider infinitesimal paths, right? We want to remember that one of the philosophies of, of the course is to understand the difference between global uh, effects and local effects. Local effects, differential equations, can be universal in their character, okay, but global effects can be specific to boundary conditions and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, other effects that, uh, that are not necessarily universal. So to get to the heart of the matter, I want to consider infinitesimal paths. And I want to, I, and I want to generalize these ideas to infinitesimal paths. I'm going to be on a, on, a, on a sphere, and I'm going to illustrate some of the ideas here. So I consider a mesh. Okay, I use theta and phi as usual on the sphere. Uh, spherical polar coordinates, and, uh, and I'm going to consider parallel transport of a vector in the theta direction and then in the phi direction. And I'm going to compare that to transporting it first in the phi direction, then in the theta direction. Okay, it's clear from our, from our example uh, with a sphere that uh, parallel transport depends upon the path uh, along which it's made. Okay. That, so that means that if I parallel transport along an infinitesimal dire direction one and then infinitesimal direction two, that'll be different than if I do it in the other order, infinitesimal direction two and then infinitesimal direction one. Okay, I, I might get back to the same uh, point in both cases, but I've taken different paths, okay, and so I expect to get a different answer. This is a convenient way of phrasing what I've learned in the previous case to a situation that I can handle with differentials. So I'm going to define the commutator of the covariant differen differentiation in one direction with the covariant differentiation in the other direction as the standard uh, commutator. And it looks at the difference between uh, doing things in the different orders. Okay. We expect that this commutator is going to be different from zero and it's going to be a local measure of k suggested from our, uh, from our example on the sphere. And I want to check this out on the surface of a sphere. Now later in the course, of course, we'll look at these kind of commutators for a general uh, a manifold, and we'll make some general theorems. But for the moment, we're looking for a little inspiration, and I want to get us used to doing some calculations so that everything's not totally mysterious. So we're going to do some calculations now of this commutator in the case of the sphere where we can just do everything explicitly. No abstract thinking at all. We're just going to do some, 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 some calculations and I think it's handy to break into this uh, subject by doing some very straightforward calculations. I've noticed in teaching general relativity to uh, upper level graduate students uh, that um, their, their grasp of covariant differentiation in Riemannian geometry is uh, very, very, very slick and very accurate. Then I ask them to apply it to a particular case, like a manifold of two dimensions, and they don't do so well. So we're going to try to uh, combat that problem right from the get-go and start learning uh, covariant differentiation and the ideas of holonomy, uh, path dependence of these operations uh, right from the start. Okay, so just bear with me. We're going to do some, some ordinary arithmetic. We're going to differentiate sines and cosines. And, and, and show that this commutator is different from zero and that it's a measure of the uh, curvature of the surface. So I start with a point on the unit sphere. Here it is as usual, written down in polar coordinates. Okay, at each point, theta phi, there's a tangent plane. Okay, and I can parameterize that tangent plane with two tangent vectors, just the, the gradient of r in the theta direction and the gradient of r in the phi direction. Okay, at any particular point, those give me two directions. They're, uh, they're orthogonal, and, uh, and they uh, sweep out the two-dimensional tangent plane at that point. Here, I just take the derivative. Just take the derivatives here and here. Okay, it's worthwhile doing that. Okay, I notice that when I, when I do this, well, this is my, this is my favorite uh, quantity at the moment, the tangent uh, to a geodesic. 
and I know that it's normalized to one, and here I just check that it's normalized to one by taking the square of this plus this plus this, and I get one. Okay, as expected. I see that there that the, the that this mesh is orthonorm orthogonal. Okay, and I check that here. I check, however, that R sub phi, the derivative of R in the, in the phi direction, is not a, a normalized vector. It has a normalization. Just calculate it. Square of this component plus square of that component, it's sine squared of theta. It's not equal to, it's not equal to, to one, it's equal to that. And let's keep that in mind, okay? The magnitude of, of R, of the length of this vector is sine squared theta. Okay, so that, that I take some derivatives, that sets me up. Now I want to really take the course. Not these derivatives, but I want to take covariant derivatives. Okay, and that's easy enough to do. Well, let's, let's, let's do that on, uh, on, on, and, and apply that to the tangent uh, vectors, okay, at the, point, at the point P. So R sub theta, R differentiated with vector theta, and R sub phi, R differentiated with vector phi, those vectors uh, are, the, are, the, are the tangent vectors uh, there, and you know, they align themselves along the mesh of theta and phi. Okay. Once I, once I do it for these two uh, fellows, since they, since they span the, the, tangent, uh, the tangent space at that point, I can get the general result from linear superposition. Okay. So if I, if I do it for this case, I've basically learned everything I need to know. And uh, and so let's so let's do that. So let's I'll I'll do, do this fellow first. And I see the first one I have to calculate is the covariant derivative of r theta in the theta direction. Okay. So I have to do that. That's that's easy. I have r sub theta on the previous on the previous uh, 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 poster. Uh, the first thing in in calculating the covariant derivative in classical differential geometry is to calculate the regular derivative. Then you subtract from that the components in the perpendicular direction. That leaves you with the rate of change of the vector in the tangent plane, and that's what the covariant derivative is. Okay? It's that part which is relevant to the intrinsic geometry of the surface. Well, I, I, we've done this before. Uh, I know that when I calculate this, I get a, I get a result which is normal uh, to, the, to the surface. Okay? It's normal to the surface, so the covariant derivative of the tangent is equal to zero. Okay, this was the definition of a geodesic. Okay, we're just reiterating that. Okay, this result was expected. Okay, so that takes care of that bit. I'm just calculating away. Now the next thing is, in the commutator, I need the derivative of this fellow with respect to phi. So the first thing I'll do is I'll differentiate it with respect to phi. Okay, and uh, and I do that, and this is what I, and this is what I find. I check, okay, I check that uh, this, this fellow has no component uh, in, the, in the normal direction, and so the covariant derivative is the ordinary derivative in that particular case. Okay, so that was, uh, that was easy. I think you can do those calculations and understand them. I'm not going to dwell on it. Similarly, I want to calculate uh, the, other t the other term in this commutator, where first I hit it, I, I hit it with... Uh, with the covariant derivative in the phi direction, and then I hit it with the covariant derivative in the theta direction. Okay. Okay. So similar, similarly, I just I, I, I just calculate away. Here's here's r sub theta. I can take the covariant derivative in the in, in the in the phi direction. I can then differentiate that in the in the theta direction. This is the result. I want you to check it, and that's the kind of calculations we'll do in recitation section, uh, okay, just to make sure everybody uh, is, is on board with this. I'm just differentiating sines and cosines with respect to their angles, and that's easy enough to do. Okay, now finally, I check that this result here, right here, is perpendicular to the normal vector, okay, and so, therefore, the, or the ordinary derivative with respect to theta is the covariant derivative with respect to theta, okay. Okay, and so uh, and so that's that's easy. That's easy for me to check, and, uh, and, and 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 quite intuitive. Okay, fine. So I have the ingredients. I add them together. I I form the I form the uh, 
the uh, commutator. And of course, I'm left behind with those bits that I showed on the previous poster. I'm left behind that the, that the commutator on R theta is in fact this stuff, which I recognize as being R phi. Okay, okay. So covariant derivative on one of the tangent vectors gives me the other tangent vector. Okay, now, uh, now thinking ahead to the general theorem, okay, I wanna write this in a way which is suggestive of the, of, of the general theorem. And in fact, uh, I can write R sub phi here as this. It looks a little complicated, but uh, bear with me. Okay, this is a special case of, of a general theorem, and so the general theorem uh, has, has more ingredients in it. But the right-hand side is also, in, in addition to being R sub phi, is also the, the, uh, uh, the Gaussian curvature that's one upon R squared. And then, and then a, a, some uh, vector calculations to be done, r sub theta cross r sub phi cross into r sub theta. Okay, let's check that that's the case. So r is one upon r squared. And then it's easy to see that in fact this, is, this collection of stuff is nothing but r sub phi. Okay, just apply the right hand, just apply the right hand rule, okay, to these, uh, to these, to these vectors, okay. And so r theta points along the, points on an increasing theta direction, r phi in an increasing r phi direction. So, so r theta cross r phi points in the minus, minus a radial direction. Then if I cross the minus radial direction with r, with r, with r theta, okay, uh, then, I, then I get, uh, okay, then, then I uh, instantly see that, that, that that's a, a vector uh, that's, r, that's r phi, okay. Uh, r phi, uh, the normalization of R phi is the, is uh, comes from uh, is on this side and it's also uh, hidden here on this side. These two other fellows are unit are unit uh, vectors. So just just check that for the sphere that that's the case. And so I can write the result in this particular form. That's the form that's going to generalize uh, to a general manifold. But the important point in my little calculation here, really, was to see that I get something which is non-zero. I apply, I apply the commutator to one of the tangent vectors and I get the other tangent vector. Okay, and here's a fancy way of writing that. Okay, we'll see that when we, when we make the general proof that this is the kind of structure that we're going, that we're going to find. And, and so I want, to, I want to anticipate that. Now I can do the same thing, uh, except replacing R sub theta by the, uh, the tangent vector in the phi direction. And I have more algebra to do. Well, you guys can, can differentiate sines and cosines better than I can. There's no doubt about it. And you can do this commutator. And when you do that commutator, you'll find that, yes, indeed, you do get a result which is non-zero, and it's sine squared r phi. Okay. Sine squared theta. Well, that's very specific to the sphere. I want to write that in terms of the variables at hand, which might generalize to a, more, to a, uh, to a general uh, surface, and so I want to write them in terms of r theta and r phi. Those are the, those are the tangent vectors, the vectors at our disposal. Uh, but now I just look back at, the, at, my, at the, uh, the algebra I've already done, and I see, oh yes, r sine squared theta was nothing but the normalization of r sub phi. Okay, and so the right-hand side, in fact, can be written as a cross product of r sub phi cross r sub theta cross r phi, okay, that, 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 that produces a sine squared of, uh, of theta. I re identify that as r squared uh, sub, sub phi, and the direction is r theta. How do we get the direction? We'll just take these cross products, okay, okay, and, uh, okay, and, and it's easy. r phi crosses r theta, that gives you a direct, that gives you something in the, uh, <coughs> okay, in the, uh, in, in the direction of n, and n cross r phi, okay, gives you, some, gives you a result in the direction of r theta, just through the right hand rule a couple of times. Then track through on the normalizations, you'll see that this is the sine of, the, uh, uh, of theta squared, and identify this r theta squared. Okay, and, and so then I see that the right hand side, okay, of this, uh, of, uh, of this expression, right here can be identified as, 
okay, as uh, as, as this object here, okay, just the just that the, the cross product that similar to what we found before crossed into the the, the vector that we're operating on, okay, okay, and and so and so so then in in, in both cases I have a simple result, I. I have a right-hand side which is common to both uh, both calculations, and I have I see how the vectors how, how the vectors work. I see importantly that the result can be written as proportional to the curvature of the of the sphere, and maybe let's look for that when we when we come to discussing uh, covariant uh, differentiation in a more in a more general in a more general context. Okay. So I think that's worthwhile. Uh, I check the check the calculations, and now we're ready, okay, to do to do uh, to start thinking about uh, surfaces with uh, with general curvature. So we we studied planes, we we studied surface uh, surfaces of constant uh, uh, curvature, spheres in our particular case, and now we want to move on and and discuss the geometry. Uh, okay, both uh, differential and global of uh, of surfaces embedded in uh, in R three, and so that's the that's a topic that will uh, that will uh, pick up uh, next time, and we'll begin with a discussion uh, of the metric.